Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to a brand new mod spotlight for Natura. Natura is a uh, mod made by MDIO, the maker of Tinker's Construct, and it adds a whole bunch of world gen. If you've seen on the Forgecraft server, we've got all kinds of really cool stuff that gets added to world gen uh, that we've kind of been, uh, you know, using a little bit with Tinker's Construct, and it's it's a really cool mod. It adds a bunch of uh, mostly trees and uh, berries and different types of wood and different materials you can make with the wood, and then even adds a bunch of world gen to the nether, which in my opinion makes the nether a little bit more exciting because I've always felt that the nether was a little bit sparse like I go there to get lava and that's about it but there's all kinds of cool stuff you can find in the nether now um, then uh, you also get a bunch of different uh, different seeds all kinds of stuff you can grow mostly so Natura is a really neat mod it even adds a couple different tools that are just pretty neat looking so I'm going to start playing with this mod a little bit show you guys some of the uh, different tree types that can grow some of the different uh, you know bushes and stuff and then we're going to head into the nether and check out what happens in there all right let's get started taking a look at Natura. So like I said, Natura is all about world gen, and I could spend a lot of time traveling around just to find a bunch of world gen stuff to show you guys, but instead I'm going to go ahead and hook myself up. Now one of the first things that I want to show you is the redwoods. Redwood trees are awesome, and I'm going to plant them at the beginning of the spotlight and then come back to it after it hopefully grows. It usually takes several days to grow, but we need to plant them in a 7x7 seven seven pattern. That's right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Holy cow. Yeah, that is a lot of saplings that you're going to need. But don't worry, the redwoods are an awesome tree. Uh, they are, if you have watched any bit of the Forgecraft series, huge. And they really grow super tall. So we're going to give this uh, a few days here to grow. And then we'll come back and see this towards the end of the spotlight. But for now, let's take a look at some of the other saplings that are available here. One of the first ones I want to show you, uh, just by random, is the amaranth sapling. This guy is neat. I'm going to get myself some bone meal and show you the first tree that is part of the Natura mod. Boom. Oh, that is nice looking. It's a really tall tree as you can see. Tall and thin and the uh, center of the wood here is like this purplish color as indicated, you know, and uh, you can see it's pretty cool. And you can go ahead and get yourself some really nice planks with it. And as I said, most of these guys can be made uh, to make wooden doors that are fancy. Now this just makes a normal wooden door, so we got nothing to worry about there. Uh, but when placed in the world, these things just look pretty cool. Nice. Now, rather than growing all these trees by hand, I've gone ahead and put them all together and prepared them for you guys so you can see everything all together at once. Pretty cool, right? So here are a bunch of the trees that are available. I'm still waiting for my giant redwood to grow. Like I said, it takes a long time, but they're huge when they do grow. Um, and I also want to mention real quick before we get any further in the spotlight, I am using a beta version of this mod that we're exclusively testing on the Forgecraft server. So there are a couple of trees and things that you'll see in the spotlight that aren't released yet, but they will be extremely soon. So let's go over some of the different trees that are available here and the different types of uh, wood. First off, we've got the tiger wood tree. Pretty cool looking tree with some nice wooden planks. And uh, while we're here, I want to mention that you can craft crafting tables with most of these different types of wood, and you'll get like a little specialty textured, uh, you know, custom crafting table. And if we take a look in here, uh, you won't necessarily see them in any eye. You only kind of see one in there. Uh, but if we go ahead and look up uh, the different types of wood that that are available and uh, you just look up what you can make with them with the U key for example uh, you'll be able to see uh, the the different looks of the different crafting tables which is uh, pretty cool looking yeah there's definitely a bunch of them available so I'll get into some of them in just a bit uh, we've also got maple pretty nice looking tree pretty cool bunch of different types of uh, you know trees in here we've got this type of uh, wood and plank moving on we've got the amaranth tree we just saw that one a moment ago, but I put it in here just to be complete. Cool. And then we've got the Secura tree, which is the first tree that includes a door with it. So you can see this is a custom door that looks pretty nice when tied up with the Secura wood and the, uh, the, the wood and the planks there. Cool. While we're here, I'll show you the eucalyptus tree. Nice little, uh, you know, door here. And those are the different types of wood and planks. Next up is hop seed. Here's the door and the wooden planks. Pretty cool. The tree is actually pretty short and has a lot of leaves, but you can actually, if you want, kind of dig through and eventually make your way back to the uh, heart of the tree and you'll eventually find the wood. It's pretty uh, thick, that tree. Here we've got the silver bell. 
Nice. And finally, this guy, the willow. Pretty cool. This willow tree, uh, its leaves kind of extend pretty far towards the ground. Not bad. And finally, I want to show you guys uh, the redwood. Uh, redwoods actually have two doors that go with it. You can craft the doors both out of the planks and out of the uh, wood itself. There's actually three types of wood that uh, comes out of the redwood here. You can see here's one type with its door, and the door really blends in well with the redwood itself. So if you want to kind of create like kind of a secret or hidden door, it works really well for that. And uh, this is the heart of the redwood here and the roots of the redwood. So they each have different types of uh, wood that go with them. And here's what the planks and the, uh, the door that's made out of the planks looks like. So those are all the different types of wood Wood doors and wooden planks that you can get with Natura. Now let's move on to some of the bushes. Again, you'll find these, uh, you know, littered around the landscape. You'll kind of find them naturally occurring in World Gen. First off, we've got the mallowberry bush, the raspberry bush, the blueberry bush, and the blackberry bush. Okay, once you plant these guys down in the world, they're going to start to grow, and they'll grow larger and larger. And then once they've reached their full size, they'll start producing berries. And I'll come back in a moment when I'm ready to show that. And while we're at it waiting for this, I'm going to go ahead and get myself a bit of sand because I want to show you one other plant that comes as part of World Gen, and that is the uh, Seguro fruit. Uh, you can go ahead and place your Seguro fruit right here, and it kind of grows into like a cactus type structure. And every time it rains, it'll start producing a bit of fruit for you that you can harvest as well. So I'm going to let that guy grow. Now, while those bushes over there are growing, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the other plants that you'll find in Natura. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get myself a hoe and just tell a little bit of the gland here. There we go. Uh, there's two plants or seeds that you'll find whenever you break tall grass. So just break any tall grass or any tall grass-like structures, anything that breaks, uh, you know, the normal wheat seeds. And you randomly have a chance to get barley seeds and cotton seeds. Now, barley seeds are pretty cool. Uh, you can go ahead and check out the fact that barley, right here, if you mouse over, it shows you similar to wheat, it grows in the wild. Cool. Let's go ahead and help it grow along a little bit faster. That's what it looks like when fully grown. Cool. You can see it's not growing anymore. Okay. I'll get myself a little bit more bone meal to grow up my cotton plant. Now, cotton plants can also be found just out in the wild. I think there is actually a cotton plant around here somewhere. Yes, so you can see some of the distance over here. Cotton plants, you can go ahead and uh, harvest, uh, just break them, or, uh, you know, left click to harvest their cotton. Now, if you, uh, you know, click again, or mine it like that, it's going to go ahead and give you uh, the seeds. Cool? Not bad. So uh, the seeds do come from tall grass, but you can also get them from cotton plants that you found in the wild. And as just demonstrated, you can just left click on them and then they'll regrow their cotton over time. So, uh, you know, no need to, you know, break and replace. There you go. You'll just get your cotton. Now, cotton can be used for a couple different things, particularly string and wool. Uh, three will get you string and nine will get you wool. And uh, considering that it's four string uh, to get wool, that would come out to be 12 cotton. You're getting a bit of a deal here if you go ahead and craft your wool out of cotton instead of first crafting it into string and then into cotton. Not bad. As for the barley, well, that stuff is pretty neat, too. Once you break it, you go ahead and get uh, some extra seeds and some barley. And it's similar to wheat in the fact that you can convert it into bread. But you can also take one barley and turn it into barley flour. Okay. Now, barley flour can be cooked in any kind of furnace, and it'll turn into, you guessed it, bread. There you go. Smelting barley flour into bread. So uh, you can get bread one for one from your barley uh, instead of uh, in like vanilla Minecraft where you have to get uh, three wheat to get the bread. And I think that we even get in here a uh, wheat flour recipe. You can go ahead and convert wheat into wheat flour as well. Um, so you can also use that in uh, making cake if you want, but for now it's used to smelt into bread cool. So that is uh, kind of, you know, another recipe that you can, you know, make from vanilla materials. Cool. 
Now, if you're like me and you hate the nuisance of uh, planting and growing stuff, you can go ahead and hook yourself up with uh, some wheat seed bags or any other kind of seed bag. You can see they have it for almost every type of uh, material that you can grow with, including bone meal. Uh, all it is is just uh, you know a 9x9 nine nine grid full of the items that you want to plant. And what it'll do is it'll automatically plant in a 3x3 three three area. So let's give it a shot. It's pretty uh, easy to make. So I've got some uh, barley seed bags here, and I'll even get some potatoes as well. And we'll just go ahead and clear out a 3x3 three three area and I'll make it a little bit larger just to demonstrate when I go ahead and right click in a spot boom 3x3 three three of wheat cool and you can also do it with the bone meal for example right here boom 3x3 three three of bone meal application not bad not bad at all actually I like that it's uh it's a quick and easy way it just makes it a little bit easier to uh, number one store all your seeds and materials because you quickly start building up a lot of extra seeds and stuff and it just makes it easier to harvest and plant stuff it's really a pretty nice way to uh, you know deal with it and there's no extra it's just you know nine seeds and then in the end it plants down nine seeds simple but effective now there's one more piece of world gen that I want to show you in the overworld here, and I have to fly really high up to get to it. You can probably see it right now. Uh, a couple people actually posted in some videos I've made in the past asking what is the deal with this stuff up in the sky. They're clouds. Uh, world gen clouds that you can actually get pretty high up there if you want to. And I'm going to just get really high up. You're going to have to find your own way up into the sky without using creative mode, but I'm sure you'll come up with something. Uh, you can go ahead and see that you can harvest this stuff if you try. Cool. Nice. Nice. I like it. Uh, it does help prevent you from falling or taking fall damage. So let me just flip on creative here. Much better. Uh, I did harvest a bit though, so let's see how we managed to do. So I've got some clouds. So light and fluffy, saves you when you fall. So I'm going to take my uh, quantum suit boots off here and uh, just go ahead and plant down a couple clouds. Cool? Good deal. Alright, let's uh, actually get really high up where I would normally take fall damage, and jump into the clouds. Boom! No fall damage at all. Nice. So that's what the clouds do. There's actually several types of clouds. Um, you'll find these in the overworld, and there's two other types, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, the dark clouds, for example, do cause lightning strikes, so watch out. But you can only find them in the end, and they're not fully implemented yet, so I can't really show them to you too much. Uh, but you'll also find ash clouds and sulfur clouds. These guys are both found in uh, the nether, and I'll show you the world gen for them in a bit, but you can see that nine ash clouds will convert into one charcoal, and sulfur clouds can actually get you eventually some sulfur, which can then be converted into gunpowder. Nice. So we'll see what these guys look like when we head down into the nether in just a moment, which uh, I think we're getting pretty close to being able to do, because I think I've shown you guys pretty much everything that generates in the overworld. Everything left to show you is going to happen in the nether. Uh, we're just still waiting for some of these plants to grow. We can see here that this one has grown to full size. This one's kind of partway through its growth cycle, and these two are still very young and haven't uh, grown much at all. So we're going to give them a little bit of time. Like I said, the berry plants here, once they are fully grown, will We'll start producing berries and I'll show you how to get them in a moment. Alright guys, we're gonna head into the nether now, check out some of the world gen there, and then come back in a little bit to check out some of the grown plants that we've already set up and are waiting for. So let's see what the nether has in store for us. So guys, here we can see a couple of the world gen structures of the nether right in this line of view. We've got some of the clouds here that I told you about, some of those sulfur clouds that you'll find. Uh, you've also got right nearby um, a couple types of uh, material. For example, here's some more of the clouds, okay, right there. And then we've got this awesome tree. This is actually a pretty interesting tree. It grows upside down, so you can see them all growing here on the roof of the nether. That is cool. Um, that particular tree happens to be this guy, the blood sapling. Nice. So you just go ahead and uh, plant this guy right here, for example. We'll kind of put him up. You have to get him uh, planted upside down, and he'll go ahead and uh, grow. I don't think he'll grow on netherrack, though. I think world gen he can, but uh, on other places he has to grow on certain types of dirt. So that is the blood sapling, and if we take a look here, the blood sapling can make all kinds of cool stuff. It does make a really neat looking door. Cool. And uh, it, it can also be used to make different types of swords and tools, and it's also got its, um, you know, different types of planks and stuff, so not bad at all. Uh, this is also a fire-resistant tree, so he won't have a problem getting lit on fire. So it's just a pretty cool, in general, looking tree. Uh, nice. Yep, bloodwood. Very cool. 
I like it. Uh, so that is what we're taking a look at here. Now, the other type of tree, which is actually nearby, and I've got a jetpack on to help me fly around here, is this really cool looking blue tree. I want to say that might be the ghost wood. Nope, ghost wood is white. That would have to be the dark wood then. All right, I was close. All right, so the dark wood tree, as we can see here, uh, produces chalky apples. <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, you can see that it produces a, a really cool looking bluish kind of wood and uh, it also has two different types of uh, leaves. Uh, the white leaves contain one of these apples. Cool. Potash apple. Tastes a bit like chalk. And it does even give you a little bit of damage when you eat it, but it does fill your hunger bar, so you're good to go. And then this green guy here um, is just another type of leaf. Pretty cool flowers. So I guess sometimes you get flowers from it. You can also, again, create different types of tools and shovels. So the concept here is ideally that you can go ahead and actually live in the nether and not have much of a problem. You've also got a different type of um, material here. This stuff, I believe, is just the dirt. So let's see. Yep, that is the tainted soil, a special type of dirt. Now you can go ahead and uh, plant this up on the roof. Let's go ahead and see here if this is going to work. Just curious if I can put my bloodwood sapling on the dirt. Nope, I guess I can't get that to plant right now. That might be a bug. Like I said, there's a couple uh, different, uh, you know, tweaks. This is a still a beta version. Oh, I was wrong. You actually do plant them like normal. So you do plant them on the ground here. And then when you grow them, they'll kind of uh, go ahead and find their way up to the ceiling. Look at that. Oh, that's kind of cool. Interesting. That's a neat growth mechanic. So you just plant them on the ground like normal, and then they'll find their way up to the ceiling. Okay, you already saw the uh, dark wood sapling here. Cool. Now we've also got the ghost woods, which is a pretty nice looking tree. And that one also has a door, of course. Oh, that's cool. The ghost wood door is kind of a little bit see-through. Nice. I really like that. Look, you can kind of see right through it. That's cool. And uh, the ghost wood tree and planks, of course, right here. Nice. Now, uh, the leaves are pretty neat looking, as you can see. And we've got one more, the katsu sapling. Now, this guy is a little dangerous, so be careful. Growth, please. Oh, boy. That's a cool looking tree. Now, uh, you do want to be careful when you harvest these guys. They have a little bit of an explosive personality, you might say. Yeah, so be careful when you're harvesting them, because they will hurt just a little bit. Uh, but the, uh, the, the, the wood here looks really nice, and as does uh, the planks. Pretty cool. Let's see, katsu. You can make uh, tools out of it, but there's no special uh, door just yet. Now, also in the nether, you're going to find a couple different types of berries, okay? So I think I've already seen a few of them here, but you've got dusk berries, you've got blight berries, Skyberries and stingberries. Oh boy, those guys are pretty nasty. You'll also find uh, these guys, different types of mushrooms littering out the landscape. So uh, you've got purple, green, and blue. Pretty cool. You can see they're glow shrooms, so they actually emit light, which is neat. Nice. Now, if we kind of look around here, we might see some of the stuff in the wild. Let's go ahead and just jump into creative. It's a little bit easier to fly. So we can see here, we've got um, some of the glow shrooms, as you can see right there. And down here, we've got some of the berries in the wild. And it's real simple to access the berries. Just right click. I guess not. All right, that one might not have been fully grown yet. We're going to have to wait for one to fully grow before I can show you that. Um, finally, over here, we've got a neat material called heat sand. And we've even found a couple of the vines. Nice. Now, heat sand is a little dangerous. You're going to want to be careful when you find this stuff. It is a uh, type of sand, so you're going to want to harvest it with a shovel. It looks like the mining drill just hasn't been recognized yet. But if we take off our boots here and walk around on it, boom, we're taking a bit of fire damage. So you're going to want to have some kind of fire resistant boots or something like that to be able to survive on the sand. Luckily, I've got that just right here. Cool. Uh, also, this cool stuff. Nice. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm probably going to need shears for this. There we go. Got myself some of this cool stuff. These are thorn vines, and uh, they will do a bit of damage if you're not careful. So let's get out of the heat sand, actually. Yeah, 
and I'll just show you guys that thorn vines will hurt if you stand near them. Oh look, and here we found uh, some of the, the darker clouds. Let's head back to the overworld now and see if any of the stuff we planted up there has grown while we were waiting and playing around down here in the nether. There we go. Alright, some of our uh, berries have grown almost to full size. Still no redwood yet, but I'll definitely show you one before the end of the episode. Why don't I show you guys some of the berries that are available right now. So you can see here, a bunch of different types of berries. We've got the blight berry, the dusk berry, the sky berry, and the sting berry. These are all the ones that were found in the nether, and they all have different effects on them. So for example, if I eat this guy right here, you'll see that we get mining fatigue and strength. Pretty cool. And uh, I'll show you the next one in a second. Right here, oh, that hurts. We get poison, but we also get regeneration, and the poison is not quite as long as the regen effect. Mm -hmm. Neat. Cool. Right here, this guy gives us night vision, and this one here gives us slowness, but a jump boost, and then the slowness wears off pretty quick, and then we get jump boost for a little bit. Nice. Now, those are the nether berries, but we've also got raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, and uh, mallow berries, which all come from the overworld berries. And we can uh, combine uh, the raspberry, blackberry, and blueberry, or the mallow berries, kind of any three of these, or even the four can come together to give you a berry medley, which is a nice combination of uh, the different berries. And they do a good job of, uh, you know, filling up your hunger bar. Most of the berries by themselves don't really give you much of a hunger bar fill, usually about half of a bar, but they are very saturating so they'll uh you know your hunger won't go down quite as fast you can also eat these guys um pretty quickly you'll see that they eat much faster than normal food and uh they um like i said just don't last that long but they're pretty cool and guys, because I didn't want to uh, wait for that nifty little tree to grow, it was taking a long time, I went out and found one in the world. Behold, the redwood tree. Yeah, that's a big tree. Uh, this thing is huge. I mean, look at the comparison to the trees next to it that are just normal sized trees. And then you've got this big bad boy. I mean, it's enormous. Um, it just really just kind of goes like even above cloud level. I mean, we're still going here, <laughs> way above cloud level, <laughs> and this tree is enormous. Like, it almost goes up to uh, the, the, the Natura trees. I mean, it's just nuts how tall this thing is, but it's a really cool tree. Uh, some people have been known to make their homes in them. Uh, like I said, they can make pretty cool uh, decorations and nice wooden doors that are really kind of hard to see when up against the tree. And with that, guys, I think we're about ready to wrap up the Natura Spotlight, so I hope you guys enjoyed checking it out. Lots of cool world gen stuff adds a bunch of different types of food and different kinds of berries and stuff that are just really neat and uh, makes the nether a more interesting place. I think the goal is uh, for people to be able to live in the nether full time if they want to. So it's definitely an option with all the different wood and berries and food and stuff that's added to the nether world gen. So a pretty cool mod overall. So this is Direwolf20 signing off on the Natura Spotlight. Hope you enjoyed it and as always, take it easy.